Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Blog. This is episode 147, and today we're going to be doing another comic review with Venom issue 165, The Nativity Part 2 of 2. This is the finale and ending of Mike Costa's current run on Venom. And the reason I say that is because we found out on Amazon there is another book coming out this fall, but we'll talk about that when we get to the end of the review of this. Um, although we already made a whole video on it uh, called Venom the First Host, we will talk about it more again when it makes more sense to at the end of this video. Uh, but for now, I want to give out the free digital code for this. So boom, there you go. First person to go to that website and put in that code gets the digital copy of this book so you can read it for yourself. And uh, if you miss out, because the code is only one use, so if you miss out, don't worry. We have a lot more codes to give away coming up very soon. Uh, but yeah, this issue, it was really good. I got to say, this run overall has had ups and downs for me. I really like the Craven arc with uh, Craven the Hunter and in, in a basically Venom defending this underground group of dinosaur people, you know, from being hunted by Craven. I thought that was a really great story and it kind of showed, you know, Eddie's real turn in his life that he's trying to actually be a hero this time. The suit has been through a, a major journey and that's what this show is all about. It's us talking in chronological order about all the stuff Venom has gone through. And recently with the death of Ann Wang, we kind of got to the end of the first chapter of Venom's life. And then what we're going to do into season two and leading up to the film coming out is go through all the times that the Venom symbiote went to other hosts. Like when it went to Matt Gargan, who is the Scorpion, uh, who does appear in this issue and appeared at the beginning of this run when Mike Costa wrote the first couple of issues. It was uh, Matt Gargan revealed that he worked at Alchemex as a security guard, but he was doing illegal stuff on the side. And that's how he meets Lee Price, who became the new Venom for six issues before the suit was ripped off of him and, and Eddie Brock took it back. And now that it's back with Eddie, it wants to do the right thing. You know, it's been getting treatment with Eddie at Alchemex, and Alchemex has been providing medicine and things that it's been working on and antidotes and stuff to help the symbiote uh, bring it all back together, like its mind back to unison. Because, you know, with all the different hosts it's had and everything that people used it for, that symbiote was being driven crazy, even though it was like, you know, bonded with anti venom uh, or Flash Thompson to become uh, venom, uh, agent venom. It, uh, it started to like being a hero and doing good, uh, even though it still had gave a bad side to Flash Thompson. So that relationship wasn't perfect. And, uh, and really, it wanted to go back to its first love, and it knew that Peter Parker would never take it. So now that it's back with Eddie, it wants to do things right. And Eddie now is in a different place where he's kind of found redemption, kind of you know became a little bit of a hero himself, even though he was misguided at times as toxin and influenced by other symbiotes. He did want to also do the right thing. He just signed up for the military to do military things. Things, but then only did that really to get close to the suit and take the suit back. So now that he's a guy out on the run, basically, uh, he is going around trying to do good things uh, for once, even though he still has a rough edge around him. So he's still an anti-hero, but his mindset is a lot different. He's older now. He's, he's trying to do more good than bad. And the suit kind of wants that. And it sees Eddie as a hero. And all the things they've done together these past like 15, 16 issues it's seen a better side of Eddie. So that's why it kept the, you know, the secret from him because it wanted to be sure that Eddie was a good person again uh, and was a person the suit could trust fully because when the suit found out it was pregnant, it didn't want to create another monster. It didn't want another carnage. It didn't want another of the five life foundation symbiotes. It didn't want anything like that or even toxin to an extent. It just wants to have a child that it has a better chance at surviving and living. Um, and again, you know, we talked about this story before, how every time a new writer comes on, they pretty much have like three different Venom stories that they tell, and it's the same three over and over. So this one I was really bummed out on for the Nativity and even uh, issue 161 that kind of sets this up with Spider-Woman and that whole one-shot storyline. Um, that was a really good issue, but I was still scared about this, you know, oh, the suit's pregnant again, it's going to have another baby. I was like, oh, we've been there, we've done that, I don't want to see it again. And then Nativity Part 1, they revealed it was definitely pregnant. Dixon showed up, who's an agent uh, from... Uh, from the military and the government who worked with Eddie Brock in the Carnage series and she actually died in that series. She bonded with the symbiote temporarily and then died uh, near the Darkhold uh, Black Magic book from the Ghost Rider run in the 90s. Uh, and I know I'm dumping a lot of information on you guys, so I'm sorry. We'll eventually catch up and I'll explain a lot of this stuff. Right now, reviewing modern books, it's hard because we haven't gotten here yet when we're reviewing the old books. So one day this will all make sense to you. Um, but uh, if, you, if you want it to read, make more sense, go pick up a copy and read it because I'm telling you, it's really good. This issue was probably next to 161, my favorite issue of this entire run so far. Mike Costa definitely saved the best for his last issue, and he rocked my world with it. He turned me around on this idea that we've seen a hundred times before where the suit is going to have a baby. And in this one, the book opens up right where the last issue left off. Venom's about to give birth, and Dixon's like, look, that baby's going to come out, and I'm going to take it from you, and we're going to 
put it on somebody and make them do things for the government. Uh, and then that person reveals themselves. They're in the truck with Dixon and uh, Eddie Brock, and it's Matt Gargan, the Scorpion. So back in issue one, two, and three, when he was working with Lee Price, and he was you know revealed as an Alchemex security guard who was doing illegal stuff on the side, uh, once he saw the suit back in action, it made him hunger for the suit again. Matt Gargan has been bonded with that suit and he was a member of the Thunderbolts and a member of the Dark Avengers and he misses that suit to an extent. Uh, so, you know, this government group said, look, we'll give you your suit back, your scorpion suit. And then we found out Venom is pregnant. We will give you the Venom symbiote to bond with. Uh, but you're going to be under our control. We're going to put tech in. We're designing your suit, your, your scorpion suit. So because of that, you know, you're under our control. So you can't act out of line. So Scorpion's like, yeah, they have me under control, but I want that suit. So I'm going to stay in here until until you give it to me and uh and so they're waiting for this this alien to be born and meanwhile eddie's having this conversation with the symbiote and dixon thinks you know she's that eddie's talking to her and then she realizes oh wait you're talking to the suit and, and he's like yeah the suit kept this from me i didn't know it was pregnant until just now um so you know what the hell like you know you can't have the kid like the suit's trying you know the suit's like eddie please this is why i kept it from you but I, I now know you're a good guy and I've known for a little while now and I wanted to tell you, I just couldn't find a way to do it just yet. And I didn't want you to freak out and try to kill the symbiote like you've tried to kill the other ones. I wanted to make sure we both were on the same page. Um, and so Eddie's like, look, I understand, but you know, we're done now. They're gonna take the kid from us. And just in the nick of time, Spider-Woman shows up. And actually, normally I don't like coincidences, but this was actually explained pretty well. After their encounter in issue 161, she, she's been keeping an eye on Venom uh, and Eddie Brock. And so when she saw them taken by this you know, van and stuff and shot down and taken, uh, she's been following the van. So she jumps down, rips open the roof, and gets into a battle with Scorpion and Dixon. And then Dixon reveals that she actually does have a secret and Eddie knew it. He was like, wait a minute, you died. I know you died. So why are you still alive unless you have a secret too, you must have touched the dark hold. Something in the black spell book must have re, you know, brought you back. And then sure as anything, her eyes start glowing and she starts fighting Spider-Woman. So uh, as Spider-Man, she grabs Eddie, they jump out the back of the truck and the truck ends up crashing into like a few like, taxis and parked cars up the street. And, you know, Spider-Woman's like, oh crap, the couple civilians are in danger. They just got hit by that truck. And Eddie's like, look, they're fine. It's a car accident. No one's, doesn't look like anyone's hurt. You got to get me out of here because he's still weak and he's tied up. He's like, you got to get me out of here because if they get a hold of this suit and the ba this thing's going to give birth any second now, if they get a hold of that baby, it's done. It's going to become a villain and it's going to be something that we have to stop so get me out of here so she agrees they get away they talk for a few minutes and then eddie says look i'm gonna try to do the right thing uh, after talking to her and you know uh you know, seeing her point of view as a former mother and as someone who you know just genuinely believes in second chances and wants eddie to do the right thing Eddie says, you know what? I think I know what the right thing is. I'm going to go do it. So he leaves and, you know, she goes her own way. And Eddie goes right to Alchemex, to Dr. Steve, the guy who's been helping him uh, under the orders of Liz Allen to help Eddie Brock control the suit again and prevent it from going crazy anymore. And the two of them start talking. He says, look, it's going to give birth. You have to give it birth. But I have a plan, too. So they start talking. And meanwhile, Matt Gargan shows up at his former employer, um, Alchemex. He's like, look, I know Venom's here. I saw him coming to the building. Uh, I need to get to the, you know, the facility where they're holding him downstairs. I know where it is. Let me through. Like, you, you know, you and I used to be friends. He's talking to the security guard. And the guy's like, yeah, but dude, you got fired like months ago. I can't let you in. I'll lose my job. So Scorpion's like, all right, we'll have to do it the hard way. And Scorpion kills all the security staff and fights his way down there. So as Eddie hears him coming, he's like, all right, Dr. Steve, you, you know the plan. You do it. I'm going to go deal with, uh, you know, Scorpion. And the suit's like, Eddie, don't. If you leave us, you know, you, you're weak, you know. And he's like, I know, but if I stay with you, it could hurt me more, and I won't be able to defend you uh, and keep you safe from Scorpion. Like, Scorpion will come in and take you. So Eddie makes a sacrifice, detaches from the suit, and fights Scorpion as a human. And he does a pretty good job at first, but Scorpion overpowers him. But right before Scorpion can take him down for good, uh, he gets electrocuted and he falls to the ground. It turns out his suit was booby-trapped by Dixon. So she shows up, she has a button, and she's like, I told you, Eddie, he was controllable. And she's like, so just give us the baby. And then Dr. Steve walks up and says, yeah, I'm sorry, the baby's it died in birth. It was a stillborn, so it, it's, it was a miscarriage. And Dixon's like, okay. She's like, well, I've been fighting you know, blacking out for a few minutes now. She's like, I think I'm just going to black out now because she got a head injury from the car crash. So she blacks out and then Eddie Brock blacks out as well from the fatigue of the the battle and stuff. And then leaving Dr. Steve all by himself with the, the baby and the symbiote kind of in the background. And then it does a hard cut to Liz Allen's office like the next day. And Liz Allen's talking to Eddie Brock and also a government agent on the phone. 
And she says, yeah, thank you. Uh, I know Dixon's a tough woman. She'll bounce back. I'm glad we got an update on her. She's not hurt severely. And Scorpion is back in your custody. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, and then she hangs up the phone. She starts talking to Eddie. And they reveal that the baby is still alive. It was all part of Eddie's plan to make Dixon, you know, to lie to her to make her think that uh, the baby died. So as far as the government's concern, uh, concerned, the baby's dead, and uh, Alchemex has it alive and well, and Eddie makes a deal with Liz to come and check on it twice a week to nurture it, help make sure it's on the right path, and make sure it's ready to bond with someone when it's ready to bond with somebody, and not force it right away in infancy, but actually, you know, teach it things. And the symbiote attached to Eddie wants to teach it things and be more of like a mother or father figure to it. And I think that's pretty cool. And it's definitely the the thing I it, that is different. Like I said, all the time, I was like, if they do something different with this, it's the same old story. But if they actually put in a little curveball, I might be interested. And this was enough for me. It actually turned me around. This issue 100% turned me around on this book and made me really like it. And I think it sets up greatly the book that's going to be coming later this fall. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, there's a book coming out later this fall called The First Host, Venom the First Host, written by Mike Costa, drawn by Mark Bagley. Clearly, there's po possibly going to be a second monthly Venom book announced around the time the movie comes out. So right now we have the Ryan Stegman, uh, Donnie Cates book that's coming out in May, and it's a new Venom number one. But I think either a miniseries or a, a original graphic novel, something's going to get announced at some point soon about Venom the first host. And I think that's going to be picking up the threads that are left here. So Mike Costa is not done with Venom. And although I might have been okay with him being done with Venom at one point, he completely sold me with this book. There is a few things that I could nitpick and get on about, but honestly, they're so insignificant because overall, I just was really blown away that I ended up liking this issue. I went out to the comic store to get Venomized number four this week, thinking I was going to love that and just be okay with this. But this one I loved and Venomized, I was just kind of like, eh, I was disappointed in. So I'm glad. I'm glad I got one really solid Venom book this month and or this, this week. And I'm glad it was one that I wasn't expecting to be this good. Uh, so kudos to the team that worked on this book. It was a great ending to this run. And now I'm actually glad I had that whole run in my collection because starting with the Lee Price stuff and setting up Matt Gargan as the Alchemex security guard and then paying it all off here. I mean, this issue felt like two issues. There was so much in it. It felt like two single issues of a comic. It was, it was that dense with story and surprises that I really just was like, wow, all those moments came from this one book. And then at the end, you have Venom uh, and Eddie Brock leaving and the suit goes, you know what? I was wrong about Liz Allen. I like her. And Eddie Brock says, you know what? I do too. She's pretty awesome. Uh, and then they go down, you know, see Dr. Steve and the suit goes, I like the fat doctor too. And Eddie's like, yeah, Dr. Steve is pretty cool. And then he goes, you know, and they start talking like, we, you know, the suit's like, I like all the friends we've made uh, recently, all the allies we've made. And it has like Dr. Steve there and Liz Allen and Spider-Woman. And he goes, but I'm also going to be here to protect you, Eddie, against uh, the, the enemies we've made. And then you get to see like Scorpion and, and uh, other enemies that are like have popped up as well during the run. So it was a nice send off. It was a good ending. I thought a really solid issue you and I encourage you guys to go pick it up. If you have not picked up Nativity Part 1 and 2, go do it. That's high praise for me because I wasn't even on board with this story at first and I kind of just wanted it to end so I can get to the Donny Kate stuff. But now I want to know what happens after this. And I'm guessing First Host is a storyline where Eddie and Alchemex go try to figure out who they're going to bond the symbiote with. And uh, I'm excited to read that. I think that could be cool because I'm wondering if it's going to be an existing Marvel character or if they're going to go invent a new one and find someone off the street that just is a good person. Um, it would be interesting to see, big time. So you guys let me know. And I wonder if uh, what hap what's happening in the Spider-Man books recently where Liz Allen's son, um, Normie Osborne, uh, she married Norm, uh, Harry Osborne in the comics, and they had a son together named Normie. He was just kidnapped recently by his grandfather, Norman Osborne, the Green Goblin. And as you know, in the Spider-Man book, Green Goblin has bonded with Carnage, and he's now the Red Goblin. Well, he is given uh, the, Red Car the, the Red Goblin Carnage suit, some of it, to Normie, his grandson. And now Normie is like a kid red goblin. Uh, so it makes me wonder what um, her uh, feelings against symbiotes are going to be now uh, that this happened in the comic. And I hope Mike Costa touches on that when he writes later when Liz Allen's trying to help Eddie find a proper host. I hope he puts that into account because I think that would be interesting to keep that continuity going. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. What did you think of this issue if you've read it? If you haven't and you heard all the spoilers, Go pick it up anyway. It's still super solid. It's really good. And uh, and I think it's uh, if you're a Venom fan, you're going to like it. And if you're a Spider-Woman fan, she comes across really awesome in this. And I hope she becomes a recurring character in Venom. I know she probably won't in Donny Cates' run, uh, but hopefully she will when uh, Mike Costa comes back. And I hope Scorpion becomes a full-time Venom villain. I He can leave Spider-Man alone. I don't need Scorpion fighting Spider-Man anymore. 
he needs to leave that rogues gallery and officially become a, like a, a Venom rogue. And Venom needs to start building his own rogues gallery. And I think Scorpion would be a great addition to that building of that. Uh, outside of you know Carnage and the other symbiotes, having an actual suited bad guy to fight, uh, you know, every once in a while would be really great. And Scorpion definitely amped up in this one. And and I've always kind of liked that character, but in this one, he's a full on bad guy, and I like that. Uh, so hopefully, we see more of him in the future and learn more about what's up with uh, Dixon and the Dark whole book as well so all those answers we might get later on in uh, venom the first host later this year i think it comes out around christmas time amazon said for the trade paperback but hopefully it comes out in single issues before that uh, but let me know what you guys think of all this down below thank you as always for supporting the show like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you all in the future peace